Shall we do our regular introduction, honey? Yeah, do it. Go for it. All right. Three, two, one. You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Radio Public, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for October 25th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the cornfield resistance near the smoking ruins of that phony emoluments clause, it's the professional left with drift glass and blue gal. And this week we are joined by Mr. Hal Sparks, who is a rock star, a magician, a cool dad, a comedian, and an activist whose renown extends to stage, screen, radio, the sexy liberal podcast network, Twitter, YouTube, where his channel can be found at infotainmentwars.com, and last but not least, the Los Angeles Lodge number 42 of Free and Accepted Masons of California. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Welcome, Hal. Thanks. Uh, yeah, where welcome. I where I am uh, officially the senior deacon. So yeah. you know, for all of you wondering about my rank and status. We all um, are. Yeah, I, I joined it. So like such a sidecar. But um, my grandfather was a Mason and I had not really known about it until I got some of his effects after he passed and written. And in all of his jokes that he had written, he was a he was a college professor and president of Murray State University he used to give commencement addresses and he was known for being funny which the family kept from me my entire life <laughs> while they looked at me like an alien because I wanted to go into acting and be a comedian and uh, they're like why would you even want to do that and I'm like uh I don't know anyway so in the, his jokes that he had written out were uh I found his mason card and I joined uh at random as hell or whatever but as a uh I I, I basically joined eventually like i started my journey to join partly on that and partly on just wanting to irritate alex jones <laughs> well, success. Hen hence infotainmentwars.com <laughs> i think we should yeah. mention infotainmentwars.com one more time just in case anyone oh in case anybody missed it yeah yeah, yeah. but bookmark that that's my yeah. youtube channel honestly saturday mornings at our house if the stepdaughters are good uh drift goes mm -hmm. out and gets donuts and then if it's a good mm -hmm. day and he has time, he spends the morning at your chat room. So, oh, I, yeah, we're glad, we're always glad to have him yeah, too. It's yeah. a, it's so it, he's a valued addition. Really get two for one, and this podcast with Hal Sparks only happens every seven years. So, really, true. That's right. To get over right. to uh, infotainmentwars.com <laughs> Infotainment and uh, yes, indeed, drift class in the chat room <laughs> over there. Absolutely, and jumping in there. Yep. This Saturday, I, well, actually, a couple Saturdays ago, um, we were cleaning up a street on the east side of town, and that was cool. And we're going to clean up a street this Saturday, but I think we'll be done this time. Well, all right. Time, uh, by the time we go. And since my beautiful and charming wife has mentioned the fact that you actually were on this podcast seven years ago. That's right. Um, I thought perhaps as a, just as a fun little thing, because let's have a fun little thing. Let's recap uh, the last seven years <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> quickly. I was going to say. Okay, close your eyes and imagine the 2012. All right. And all right. Barack Obama's not going to win because he screwed up the debate. And, right. And it's all going bad. And then you woke up and Donald Trump's president and Glenn right. Greenwald is on with Tucker Carlson once a week. And John Bolton's going to save us all. So I would I would hit the snooze button yeah. and go, someone put something in my drink last night. I would, That's I what would I would like, do. I would like help now, please. I'd be looking for the button for the nurse to come in. And, um, but – I actually listened to that, and, you know, it sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, back in 2012, we were talking about media and the way too many progressives had given the idea of a principled argument away to whack jobs. And yep. the fetish for balance and both-siderism in the media. And how too many liberals got used to hating the word president just because Bush used it and they couldn't That's get right. over it. That's right. And they, I think they still have that a little bit. Exactly. I think we still habitually just fall into that even when somebody wants to run for right. it. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and we spent a good long time talking about religion and faith and your karate teacher. Um, oh, yeah. My kung yeah. fu instructor. Kung yeah. fu. Yeah. And yeah. he was a cop. And oh, yeah. That was my karate instructor. That was my camp. That was uh, Bill Durbin, my uh, Kempo karate instructor. Absolutely. And just my, how faith intruded into that. Yeah. 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 Well, he was he was a cop who went to my church when I was a kid. And that's how I ended up studying martial arts. And and uh, to truncate that whole conversation, it was curious. It was my first experience of the 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 spirituality of the uh, of sort of Japanese Budo being, um, you know, ostracized essentially from the the study of karate 
um, by my own teacher who was vacillating between being a Christian minister and this idea that somehow the intrusion of any spiritualism, inc- including like even the practice of yoga, is borderline mm-hmm. Satanism. And I mean, it's such a strange uh, thing that goes on, you know. Uh, but yeah, that was that was a f- fast that 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 and of course, being a Kiss fan tempered me <laughs> in how I respect, you know, yeah. the the sort of end of the nose religious freedom theories mm-hmm. that I have. You know, that I you can have any religious freedom you want as long as it ends at your nose. Um, yeah. It, it, anything beyond that, sorry. Well, and the minute you start teaching children that's okay to question authority, um, you're kind yeah. of screwed. You're kind of screwed because eventually <laughs> they'll turn it back on you and start asking no lots question. of questions. <laughs> Right. You, you better have some really good answers or some really good books. Well, not for me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm the all father. You cannot question me. You know, it goes a long way towards um, the complexity of freedom in the United States and why I've always been a big fan of of dense bills and legalese when it comes to that, because the more complete your freedoms are, the more descriptive you need to be in the process of of mm-hmm. uh, implementing them. If if the rule is thou shalt not kill and that's actually the rule. Mm -hmm. there is no layer in it there is no freedom in it at all there is simply um if anybody dies at your hands you're done right that's a that's a hard line religious rule once you start implementing rule of law in a democracy especially and you're trying to incorporate the realities of intricate human interaction you're looking at um, that's why we have first degree, second degree murder, voluntary manslaughter, involuntary manslaughter, mm-hmm. depraved, in, de- depraved indifference, which is one of those. Yeah. Um, uh, you'd argue how the Republicans treat the Constitution most of the time. But, you know, the more free you are, the more finely written your rules need to be to guarantee that those, those freedoms are genuinely mm-hmm. enacted. Mm-hmm. Um, and less draconian they are. So I've always been a big fan of complexity because of that. And I think growing up sort of in a Christian church with a deeply Eastern sort of philosophical point in terms of, you know, the art of war and and violent interactions between human beings intermingled with this genuine desire to be as Christ-like as possible when I was 11, so as to be an irritant to the church deacons. Um because that's what he was. He went around bothering everybody, qu- you know, quoting scripture to them, calling them out on their BS, you know. And I wanted to be that when I was 11. I was baptized uh, when I was 11 years old. You don't have to in our church mm-hmm. till you're 13, you know. And I, I'm not a practicing Christian now um, by any means. But um, but at that point, I was, uh, you know, three years ahead of the game. We want to talk to you about all of the the 20 plates you have spinning at any one time mm-hmm. which we also talked about 7 years ago right um and and just get into how you became um an activist did that did that predate your role as an as an actor and comedian and so forth oh yeah yeah later? i mean to me it, it all it kind of all goes back to boy scouts really um uh-huh. my mom uh-huh. mom's a nurse dad's an architect and my mom always, you know, I, I've known how to do CPR since I was 10, I guess. I didn't have to do it for the first time till I was 16. But um, but one of the most, uh, I went to Boy Scout camp three years in a row, and the proudest merit badge I got, and I very distinctly remember getting this, was the Emergency Preparedness Merit Badge. Ah. Which is, you, you have to uh, function in uh, first aid. You need to know, um, you know, some elements of what to do to like, if there's a flood, if there's a fire, if there's, you know, any kind of breakout of something. Um, you have to have coordinative ability um, as far as getting people to safety, those kind of things, creating shelter, um, distilling water. Um, those kind of things. And I was fascinated by being, you know, as my mother would say, useful as well as ornamental and in, in life. And to me, activism, I view it as just being a citizen, quite frankly. I think activists, you know, um, it, it sounds like the opposite of pacifist, ironically enough to me. Um, but I always view it as just an act of citizenry. My, my radio show that I've been doing for you know, eight years, nine years now, mm-hmm. longer. Yeah. yeah. Um, I view it as an act of citizenship. Yeah. 
You know, yeah. I've been doing it like I started a Patreon earlier this year to sort of offset the financial cost because I've dumped about 60 K in gear sure. into the yeah, show. Just me. keeping. <laughs> yeah, we just it. keeping it on the air over time. And mm-hmm. I was like, I think people want to contribute. I will give them that ability to I don't I'll never be in the in the green, but mm-hmm. I might be out of the red with it at some point in yeah. 10 years. But the but but I always did it for free. I don't take a paycheck from the station. None of mm-hmm. that stuff, right. because to me, it was in it was a useful addition of my time as a citizen. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. um, so activist is never a word I took on. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, but it certainly fits, I suppose. Um, I just don't know how you don't. Well, and the dovetailing of, of activism, citizenship ministry, if you want to call it that reaching out and building community, um, all of that folds together in, in what we do too. So, now, yeah. uh, Driftglass says he's having a hard time hearing us. I don't know. Can you hear us, Driftglass? Can you hear me? Do I need to be louder? No, I don't. He can't hear us at all. I don't think. I don't oh know no, I can't hear him either. So it's yeah. clearly I blame him. So you and I will just have a <laughs> lovely conversation while he gets his he's gotta get, tech well, world in you order. Try reloading the page. My, I know. I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, the right. Flow of this beautiful conversation. Uh-huh. Where yeah. He's <laughs> your wife. That's right. He's great. stealing his, your wife. Uh, yes. Right. But I, it, I, uh, uh, I can't hear my microphone. Isn't you need I can to re- I can hear you. Oh, yeah. Try to yeah. reload the page and yeah. see what happens. Okay. If it, it might kick you off and interrupt our. When in I doubt. Think we're out of worst places, so. I know, yeah. but if, if it if it stops our recording, we'll just start recording again. So yeah, exactly. Right. We can right. we can solve this. I like the background kind of uh, backseat driver version of. <laughs> well, um, he's in the bedroom. Of this, I'm in you know, the front room, and this is kind of like off off cam- You know, off mic. Right. Going. What is what are you doing in there? It's not. What are you doing? As if Drift Bus hasn't suffered right. through multiple multiple tech problems with the house spark oh, I will, program uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yes well which i have solved over the That's last great. eight months uh i i got tired so very tired uh-huh. of ice skating up uh, uphill against the tech and that was partly like i said what inspired the whole patreon right. push was i was looking down the barrel of having to buy like a fresh out of the box 10k worth of gear just to get the show Mm -hmm. on the air every weekend just to guarantee it and i uh, ultimately found a workaround and thanks to like you know the the patrons and uh, this guy rob glenn who follows the show like helping us out like we solved it effectively um and so if you guys i could teach a class now on keeping a (laughs) terrestrial radio show on the air from a hotel room in iowa Um, Beijing, right huh Yeah. yeah Oh yeah, Shanghai, Xi'an Province, Chengdu, Chongqing. I've done them from there. I've done them from Köln, Germany, uh, London. I've done my show from. Uh, I've not done it from Eastern Europe or Australia yet, and I regret that. I've done it from Thailand, um, but you're back, and I can hear you, and it's wonderful. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. And I, I do have a question: is until uh, the Breitbart hackers cut me off again? Yeah, those bastards hate my hate my guts, my living guts. Uh, um, before you do you've that, got about twenty. I would like you yeah. to um, click your tongue three times, and then I'd like Hal Sparks to click his tongue three times because you're we're not lining up. But I can line you up. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Okay. It, like suddenly we're in we're in uh, what is it yeah. hereditary? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. We're both. We've t- oh, it's the spookiest now part. I can line up All right. your audio. So yeah. <laughs> we're, in, we're in mimic, and I'm I'm Mr. Funny Shoe Man. So. <laughs> right. That's, sorry, that's a deep cut of a very oh, man. Movie. It I is. Do apologize. Um. You've got about 20 plates spinning at any one time. Yeah. I mean, you really do. And it's I'm just astonished by the number of things you do and, and, and you do well. And I really don't know because every time I do listen to your show or every time you, you pop up on Stephanie Miller, you really do have a command of the facts and you have a pretty um, up-to-date knowledge of what's been going on the last couple of weeks. How Would you care to share your secret <laughs> with keeping up with the fire hose that comes out every day? Yeah, well, um, I definitely am one of those people who always has the news on in the background and is always f- throwing the news around a channel when I'm not in the middle of something. But I also I have like knuckle down periods every day, like two hours a day where I will shut out all else and work on whatever project I'm doing. I it, Sometimes I use like a focus app to make sure I don't go outside those realms. Sometimes it's just solidly, you know, I, I have to make myself do this because without it, I will chase my artistic ADD down a, a rabbit hole every single day. So I have to set time aside to focus on things. And in the, you know, between like, 
I'll sing at the whiskey on a Tuesday night for the ultimate jam night. And they'll give me, I'm known for like being the pickup artist in there that I will, any song people have dropped, like it's too many words, don't know the song, too obscure, (laughs) too many high notes. I'm like, all right, I'll do it. And so I'll spend three days learning a song to do live for the first time and once only on a Tuesday night while at the same time prepping for my radio show, cutting tracks. Um, And I, do have an entire stand-up career. So like yes. last weekend, the weekend before, the weekend before that, I'm doing a whole weekend of shows. I'm doing two shows the night before my radio show, two night, two shows that very same night, often a Sunday or a Thursday show as well. Um, that honestly is the most relaxing part of my day. Standing on stage yapping is just such a joy. And I'm so uh, built for it at this point that it is I can fall into that like a comfy bed. But um, in terms of that, you know, I also run my business in terms of as an actor, what's the next big project that I'll either be participating in or Mm -hmm, starting, mm -hmm. you know, and those are two, three, five year projects as well. Like I, 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 I mark up about my schedule seems to be at this point over the last 20 years now, um, do a show for six years, take a two and a half year break, do another Mm -hmm. show for Mm -hmm. six and a half years. And it just, it seems to be on that schedule to the point where I was referred to as a TV veteran, Hal Sparks (laughs) in an article (laughs) about me, which I was like, all right, I'll take that. That's pretty good. Um, It beats the shit out of like 1995. Who the Uh hell is this guy? Uh You know what I mean? So it's totally, it's a, it's a huge win. Um, and at the same time, you know, I'm I've I've got I've got two screenplays, one in punch up, one in sales right now. Um, I'm doing this show that we did. We shot in China all last year. Um, they fired the director. So now I'm the director. Mm-hmm. So I'm going back through all the footage and writing uh, the voiceover for all that stuff. Um, and so I have to isolate it. But in terms of the news and in your initial question, the way I do yeah. it is a news story pops up. That's in the, you know, and if I already know about it, I'll dive right into Twitter and stomp all over it if I want to. Mm -hmm. But in some areas, I will, uh, I have this, like my ear pricks up and I go, wait a second, this doesn't jive with something I remember Mm -hmm. from three years ago. And so I'll go through and track with, am I remembering this correctly? And I'll do a hot Google search of like three things in a row um, on the topic that I'm talking about just to check my facts. And make sure that they, I'm, they were, I remember them as such because we're in such a drink from the fire hose mm-hmm. era right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of, I think a lot of Biden voters are simply there, like because they don't want to hear about their president for four years. Right. They just want to know sh- stuff. I mean, really, right. I think that mm-hmm. is the, yep. the root of his base, yeah. and it's not a wrong feeling to have. Um, but I, you know, and then I, and then I will jump into it with the radio show and kind of, you know, try to make a lock comparison, and I find that. Um, it's easy to pull to to get in, at the right wing when they get out over their skis because it's so overt and stupid. It's crayons and hammers. It's idiotic. Um, when the left does it, 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 you have to give them a soft landing. And that's the harder yeah. part is trying to navigate that part of it. And And so I will I will you know, talk shit to friends a little more harshly sometimes than I will with Mm -hmm. enemies who Mm -hmm. I will overtly dismiss. And in the terms of like Donald Trump at this point, I've just rescinded back to like, I think everybody has got an opinion about him. I'm now about chipping down his mental health. So I just jump into calling him a dope all the time because apparently he's got a a chip on his shoulder about that word. Oh, nice. Bless your heart. Thank you for your contribution. We appreciate it. I want him to be in like a version of the telltale heart. I, that's my my dream of him is that, he, is that he's in the uh, in the White House going tear up those floorboards and stop the tweeting of, you know, oh, I, I kind of I want him in the cask of Amontillado. Right. He's, he wakes up. The bricks are going up one at a time, one at a time. Like, uh, what's going on? Oh, this is your wall, dude. I built your wall for you. Congratulations. From what you've been saying, Hal, number one, memory is the liberal superpower. We always say that here on the podcast. Oh, yeah. But, boy, ADD is a superpower, too. I have it. You have it. It's Yeah. I I don't consider it a disorder. It is not a disorder. When you're able to do five or six things at once and keep them in your head and at the same time hyper-focus, 
it is a gift. It is just totally. A gift. And I couldn't do I think my that, job without it. I couldn't do it. I, you know, it. the whole, like these days, the, it's always bothered me, but yeah. the, but lately the whole, the one thing, yes. you know, yeah. uh, hyper focus on a single task and only that task yeah. for until it's done 10 years from now right. is aimed at basically aimed at uh, the mm-hmm. tech industry and largely s- a borderline autism spectrum Mm -hmm. programmers Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. app developers that need that kind of focus. And they're only going to do one thing, but tell me as a director, as a, someone who's in the director's guild of America, Uh who's directed multiple television shows, what's my one job when Mm -hmm. I'm directing, not just the fact that I act and do other stuff as well. (laughs) What's the one job of a director besides clearing wardrobe, making sure the, the script, uh, changes that have been talked about have, have passed by the the sniff test of the lead actor and the others and the blocking has happened and the lighting coordinator knows exactly the look you're looking for what's my one job again like for <laughs> god's sake really really piss really. off there's no politician yeah, yeah. who can afford to be that way no, no. and uh, when my son was diagnosed with what they called at the time pdnos which is borderline autism the uh, neurologist said look two-thirds of silicon valley have what he has Yes. So what what do you want me to fix? Every great inventor. What, what are you asking right, for? Right, right. Right. So I've also said I have a problem with the. Uh, I think yeah. most scientists have a disorder. Disorder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that they actually are under the false assumption that there's an order. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's what the. Yeah. Show me the order. Yeah. Where's this baseline yeah. human being? Yeah. Who is extraordinarily capable and yet lives a pottery barn lifestyle, like where they have, you know, every piece of furniture they have is clean. There's three magazines on the coffee (laughs) table and a couple of fresh apples. And yet they manage to create something worth watching or listening to or or being around. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Go away with that crap. So, yeah. Your kid's a genius. That's yeah. what we used to call it. <laughs> exactly. And he's right. in college now, and he's a junior, and he's focused and on he's political, political science. He's a political science major, and he knows every country in the world, their flag, their government, and how it was elected. So, yeah. you right. know, that's where he's at. We blow in a call to him uh, for trivia when we don't know the language of some obscure country. Yes. And, he's, and you can hear right. his eyes rolling on the phone going, oh, <laughs> Mom, how do you not know you this? Want? They have four. There's Urdu. There's one. And I'm like, okay, okay, got it. You're brilliant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, um, can do you have any comment on the fact that the Breitbart is now included on the list of trusted news sources at uh, Facebook? I thought we might just just shit on Mark Zuckerberg for an hour. Well, but, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, let's let's just say that my my mom always used to say, "Consider the source." Yeah, and yeah, if that's yeah. their their standard, then duh. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, why, why would you trust that? And and here's yeah. the thing, like. Uh, you know, Breitbart and all of these organizations like, you know, the, the right wing news spectrum organizations or whatever are mm-hmm. are effectively as gripe festy as, say, BuzzFeed or or Vox at its worst some days. Mm-hmm. Um, the only difference is is what the accumulative purpose of what they're doing is. The The left, even when they're mistaken, often opens the world up. The right, when they're mistaken, shuts it down. Mm -hmm. And that's the that's my largest concern. The, um, you know, the 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 part about Breitbart, the irony about them is, is that they take any normal run of the mill conservative talking point, which might be worth vetting and discussing in a normal democracy um, in a in a back and forth between philosophies and they pepper it with right with like racist garbage so as it can't it's it's like putting stickers and a clan suit all over it so that when it walks in it immediately gets pummeled with tomatoes you're like yep. well it, it, you are doing your side no favors mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and and i mean facebook in and of itself Honestly, the idea that we would seek news Mm -hmm. from a social media site in general and, uh, you know, again, blue check marks being as valuable as they are. I think we are looking down the barrel social media wise of of what would effectively be blue check marks. Uh, a, and an underline or something. And an underline is someone who has sent in their ID, proved their existence, but they are just a run of the mill Joe. They right. aren't famous. They're just real. Mm-hmm. And until that point, everything, everything on social media is uh, is catfish. Mm-hmm. All yep. of it. Yep. 
And it, unless you know the person, just assume immediately it's a bot mm-hmm. f- and they're mm-hmm. and they're they're basically diverting you. They're they're the right hand of the magician while the left hand, you know, is trying not to strangle the pigeon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I don't see I mean, you're, you, you should know you're talking to two non blue checkmark people right oh, now. Absolutely. So you're lowering. Yeah. Yes. Standards just, well, just and, a and, and particularly is a very uh, touchy mm-hmm. subject for women in media who blue, blue yeah. check marks yeah. go overwhelmingly to men and you know, and right. we will give our phone number and email and personal information to Twitter no problem verify as here's a photocopy of my driver's license whatever 300,000 readers mm-hmm. a day and we can't get her we, ch- blue check mark never you know forget it right and it, right. gender has so much to do with that and and the blind spot of i mean this goes back to talking about Silicon Valley, you know, this Silicon Valley and their blind spots. And for Mark Zuckerberg, it's just, yes, I've got a check that I can cash. I'll do anything for that check because that's my self-worth, right? right? Well, Z- Zuckerberg's an Android. Yes, I is. mean, in, in yeah, all practical yeah, purposes, yeah. like I don't, I think he has, his shortcomings are in the world of empathy. Yes, and I don't think he's yeah. ever been good at yeah. that. There's a lot of, the, and and by the way, it is the kind of industry and and technology where a certain lack of empathy and a lack of those kind of values are functionally helpful yep. yes. in the same way that you got to have a certain you have to have a, a very high pain threshold to be a miner for <laughs> or example a boxer. right right yeah, yeah. Right, exactly yeah. yeah so i don't i don't necessarily fault that you know we're all benefiting from all this tech we're all right. benefiting from That's all this true. stuff and the weirdness of those people i mean the the current war is going to come out this yeah. weekend yeah Right. Yeah. And that that movie is about two insane men. Yes. Totally way off on the spectrum. Right. And the robber barons who funded them. Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So, I mean, Edison, Edison is a sociopath mm-hmm. bordering on psychopathic tendencies. And and I mean, Tesla was is the king of of the autism yeah. spectrum. Yeah. He is literally the a, apex of the value of of those kind of heightened focus, hyper focus sensitivity uh, and high intellect right. people like he's like that level of perfection and genius that made him fall in love with a pigeon at the yeah. end of his life. The man was in love with a pigeon. Yeah. Yeah. He was he missed it when it yeah. died. Yeah. He was in love with a pigeon when he died. Well, and, and Edison says, let's light up a neighborhood. And Tesla says, let's turn the entire earth into a storage battery. Yeah. That's, you know, the, right. the level of imaginative <laughs> thinking. I, you know, we could right. a death ray. Would you like a death ray? I'll make you a death ray. And, right. And- well, the, he that was a threat. That was him. That was him keeping them at bay. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I'm a huge Tesla yeah. fan, not of just the man, but the band as well. <laughs> and um, and if you've listened to the great radio controversy, Tesla's second album, which is fantastic. Uh, and you learn, you know, I, I talk about like the introduction of intellect properly. The fact that there was a band called Tesla that it had a song called Man Out of Time, which is the biography about Tesla and the great radio controversy where they call Marconi's BS, you know, on on the creation of the radio and and point to the fact that it was like, what, 12 Tesla pass, patents in that mm-hmm. that made it possible. Um, you know, the introduction of that that kind of possibility um would have never passed like they you know they they're probably tesla's probably viewed by most of the you know the the snooty intellect surrounding me in my own liberal bubble as uh as the next thing to nickel back uh-huh. on some level but but that's who introduced even the thought to an entire generation mm-hmm. of of people like me from kentucky and elsewhere but that being said like that was how things operated back yeah. then i'm not a big fan by the way of overlaying modern mores no. And and moral arguments onto the past simply because um, if we weren't assholes yesterday, we wouldn't need tomorrow. Yeah. That's what growth is yeah. about. Well, I mean, you know what I mean? You, know, you, you talk yeah. about Edgar Allan Poe, who married his cousin. You know who who, was, right. who died broke, who was insane. Who had, oh, you brought you just mentioned that because I'm from Kentucky, yeah. right? That's what that's about. <laughs> I see. No, I see. I, I'm a I'm a huge uh, Edgar Allan Poe fan. Visited his grave. Wrote yeah. a story about him and a bunch. And so I am as deep a cutter into Mm -hmm. Edgar Allan Poe as you are into Tesla. And by the way, not to pop quiz my wife, but isn't there a line about the Edison Museum, my dear? The Edison Museum, not open to the public. (laughs) That's a uh, fantastic They Might Be Giants song. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
you know, I, we like nerd music. I, that's all I can say. We oh, like, understood. We're, we're understood. Big nerd fans. And, but I would like to talk yeah. for a second about how we marshal that. Mm-hmm. Um, not not to sort of, yeah. you know, this is the poorest segue I've ever done. You'll never get a good segue in a conversation with me. We will go well, everywhere. It's okay. I, I'm right there with we you. We established that. We established the rules with the whole ADD yeah. nonsense in the beginning. So we're covered. Want, we Our butts are covered. You want, you right want Python? You want uncut Python? Do you want the contractual yeah, right. album co- Python? I will deliver that and to you. And now for something completely different. Right. Perfect. Uh, so <laughs> my my uh, I've been going back and forth with a, a well-known radio person who I have agreed not to talk about in public by name about mm-hmm. the problem of the company policy they have of not ever taking sides on anything. And right. he and I have gone back and forth because he kept wanting to know sort of who the leader of the movement is on the right and 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 what do they believe. And I said, no, no, you, you don't understand. It's not a movement. It's a market. The, the, the yeah. Fox News and all yeah. the rest of them have created a marketplace of addicts who need a certain kind of drug every day. And they will kill anyone who stands in their way who, uh, of getting it. And they will they will mm-hmm. put anyone up on a mountaintop and worship them who delivers it. And Donald Trump delivers – that drug that they yes. need with a large bore cardiac needle right to the brain better than anyone else. And they love him for it. Mm-hmm. And what they're terrified of is looking in the mirror. They're terrified of someone coming along and saying, you know, the liberals are right and you're wrong. And you've been a chump your entire life. And they can't tolerate that. This is not something something right. you can persuade someone away from or or logic them out of or kid them out of because self-knowledge is is the enemy. And you can't really talk to someone about policy issues when their entire agenda is whatever you stand for, I'm against automatically because my object, the object of my life is hating you and destroying you. Right. And, and so yeah. my focus has turned from banging on the right, which I still do, to the center, focusing mm-hmm. on the center. Who are these people who want to have a foot in both worlds? Who are these idiots who mm-hmm. want to play both sides? That's – and and – it's helpful. I don't know if you find this to be true. Helpful to understand mm-hmm. what it is you're fighting. Because if you're fighting an idea, you bring another idea to the table. But if you're fighting mm-hmm. a mob of addicts, that's a whole different battlefield, a whole different battle space, and a whole different strategy that's required. And I don't know that any of our candidates quite understand that yet. Well, I don't know that it's it. Are, arguably, it is not their job to. Unfortunately, I think what what you have, and you know, in in essence, is the perception on the right. That the left is only the ultra far left. And Donald Trump has convinced them of this. Fox carries this whole thing. Um, And they are going to believe this as long as they need to because they genuinely fear for what that would entail. And it's they they view, I think, Trump as Mm -hmm. their pit bull in that if as long as he bites the right people mm-hmm. he can shake a baby now and again yeah that's a perfect analogy mm-hmm. or honestly they that you know they are so afraid of um of mass immigration or sharia law or you know their their version of the gay agenda um they're you know that this that the most extreme egregious example becoming normalized that that danger is so acute to them and such an affront to their their uh, way of life or their view of their way of life that they are willing to say that Donald Trump was delivered by Christ himself to protect yep. the country from yeah. that. Yeah. Now the, the issue um, is, is that the way you do beat that ultimately is what I would call radical centrism. The problem is you it's it's incredibly hard to do when the when the battle lines are drawn verbally largely mm-hmm. between the hyper sides and the both siderism is the is the split. I don't view that as centrist at all. I don't both siderism is just mm-hmm. journalistic mm-hmm. malpractice. I don't view it as a centrist point of view. I think it's the opposite. I think it's a disdain for the mm-hmm. process. And where you do have like shoehorn theory kicking in where the left overlaps with the right and they're both the same nutcases, those two sides, in, especially in social media and on Facebook in particular, mm-hmm. de- mm-hmm. define the terms. And anybody who tries to tap the brakes on that and have come to a reasonable solution to a genuine problem is going to be viewed as a monster by both yeah. of those groups, which is the irony. Um, so we, we've got what we used to have as a split of of, of you know, binary tribalism, we now have a trinary 
tribalism, yes. as it were. Yes, indeed. Which I guess Tulsi Gabbard's going to run <laughs> to uh, corner the market on. <laughs> well, she's doing great. So far, she's she's playing every card she has to perfection. Yes. Who, who is in this radical centrist group, though? I don't see any Republicans in that group at all. N- n- well, um, you would count sort of you would i mean i guess mitt romney would be the first one to put his toe in it i think Mm -hmm. what i would say is elijah cummings um is a good example of the radical centrist which is you believe what you believe and you fight for what you believe but he defended mark meadows on the floor i mean in that committee meeting right while mark meadows was at tears Mm -hmm. at being called a racist in that moment that in today's age Mm -hmm. is extraordinary because he didn't go, that's unfair to my colleague, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. He fought for Mark Meadows not to be called a racist, even though I would argue that what Me- Meadows was doing was racist in that yeah. moment. But making the important distinction between a man who is being overtly racist um, or saying and doing something racist that they may or may not be aware of the depth of what it connects to or how important it is or the ramifications, you know, the slippery slope aspect mm-hmm. of their behavior and and – the core racism, which gives them um, calling them a racist versus saying they're doing racist things, which gives a person who isn't a racist, who may ultimately be on your team, a um, a an off ramp, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. which is crucial to to the discourse in a democracy. Well, now that's interesting because here at, here at the Professional Life Podcast, we're all about burning the lifeboats. And yeah, what we, we mean by that is – not right. allowing an off ramp for the Republican Party. We're not talking about individual Republicans who may come around and say, yes, yeah, no, Donald no, no. Trump was wrong. The if Republican Party has cashed all of the checks that they own in terms of rebranding. Totally. Uh, right. Themselves. I would say you can have an entire conversation from mm-hmm. genuinely conservative, mm-hmm. from a ethically and philosophically sound point of view mm-hmm. to ethically liberal entirely within the confines of the Democratic Party. Yes, you all can. the healthy conversation is in on one side of the spectrum. At this point. Exactly, the, the Republican Party as such yeah. uh, is non-existent, and some of them will try to bail out on their Bush votes and their Trump votes by calling themselves libertarians or, or now independent or independent constitutional conservatives. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. we're right. Just, we're just garbage, all over the nonsense. Place. Yep, they'll still vote for them too. Yeah. They'll no, do it again. Vote to the, cut my Social Security and Medicare. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But, well, the problem is we have a pers- that everyone in this conversation has a perspective of many years. <laughs> yeah. And we see yes. this pattern repeating itself over and over and yeah. over again. Yeah, yeah. They knock everything off. Absolutely. They destroy everything they touch. They suddenly become independents. They they hate deficits. They love deficits. They hate deficits. They love deficits. And at the end of right. the day, which is now, I, I can safely say they don't believe anything. There's mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. there's no belief that a a uh, Republican. Well, the has. ones who did exactly. left. They're gone. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the ones, yeah, they're gone. The radical- they don't call themselves that permanently. They don't call themselves that, or they've retreated into some sort of like their, their this cloak of fake heritage foundation yeah. conservatism yeah. that this is, he's just a, he's a, he's a, the tip of a spear. He's not a genuine uh, representative of the Republican ideal of the Republican okay. party. Yep. Except he is. He yeah. Ex- is. He, he, well, of course he, he, he is the boiled down essence. You've left the pot on the stove. You forgot to turn the burner off and this, and all the water is out of the soup. It is just crust and the pot is yeah. ruined. That's, that's, that's the modern Republican push. And, and it's not going to change anytime nope. soon. There's going to be a, a salvage mark. They are going to try and rebrand under Mitt Romney, yeah, yeah. the Tea Party, um, or com- going forward, exactly. and and the, but here's well, the problem I have. Yeah, with, they think it's going to be. Oh, yeah, just, they think it's going to be him and what's her name, um, uh, Nikki Haley. Oh, yeah. yeah, they think that's going to be the yeah. ticket yeah. next yeah, time around. I, I only have one problem with the with the radical centrist solution uh, because I sure. want to live in that world. Boy, do I want to live in that world. Yeah, we had mm-hmm. in in my view an eight year experiment in putting a radical centrist in the White House mm-hmm. named Barack Obama. And, right. you know, we'll compromise on anything. We'll, we'll go to the Republican retreat in Baltimore and beg them to help him with health care. Just stand in front of them and take all their questions. Who will put up with the worst racist bullshit you could imagine. And who will, mm-hmm. uh, I think it was Ta-Nehisi Coates said he, he uh, walked on ice for, for eight years and never slipped, which I think is a pretty good description. Mm-hmm. Now, he wasn't the yep. perfect guy for me. I think he was better than we deserve. But we gave the right a chance to... To, so he gave them an off ramp. 
He said, I don't want to talk about red, red and blue anymore. I want to talk about purple. I want to, to solve problems together. I'm giving you an open hand. I'm begging you to compromise. I'll meet you at the, sure. I'll meet you at your own 10 yard line. I'll come all the way down the field. And I told him to go right. pound sand. And then they nominated the king of the mm-hmm. Panthers. So I would love to see that. I, I would say, yes, I, I would, I would say the only storyline I would add mm-hmm. to that, which was an integral part of the failure of that, movement under Barack Obama was the immediate desire to hold Obama's quote feet to the fire. Um, uh, the day he stepped into office as if he was the out, the outlier the as if he was not yes yeah. yeah blaming him effectively hold th- that's what i was talking about when we spoke last about the you know the, the word president still being such a bad word we had a knee jerk reaction mm-hmm. during a good portion of the of the obama presidency to treat him exactly the same way as if he was not operating as a as an individual trying to trying to navigate a, a you know his perspective in a real situation that it was carrying the weight of the bush presidency behind it and and in in that way, I think we failed um, from the mm-hmm. from a liberal standpoint. We failed Obama in supporting the parts that we wanted. We we there was not an equal. The ACA got passed. There was not an equal number of people out supporting the the ACA regularly as there were the Tea Partyists mm-hmm. against it the entirety yeah. of the time. All those things that we got that we now take for granted under the Obama administration, including the removal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell and, and gay marriage mm-hmm. becoming yeah. you know legal and all these elements um, – were met with uh, fists on hips, of course. Well, it's about yeah. time, as if they were not genuine wins. And we mm-hmm. left him to those yes, dogs. We, we, we fed him to the Republicans. And we still, to this day, don't back him in the way that he deserves. And I think what they did mm-hmm. was they smelled mm-hmm. blood on the ground. They, they, you're not going to defend him, so we'll just walk all mm-hmm. over him. And what it looked like to the right was weakness in the face of a coming onslaught at a time when the rise in, uh, and you know, we, we're still in the scars of 9/11. We're still dealing with the, you know, the rise of uh, Muslim refugees and yeah. asylum seekers coming to the country. We're still seeing global crash, um, yeah. uh, you know, global terrorism. Yeah, and then the 2008 thing that they blamed we. We let mm-hmm. them blame mm-hmm. that on him. I mean, I, one of the reasons why I stayed on the air and was like fighting so vociferously over the last few years was because uh, do you do you know how talk about the radical centrism of standing up and going hold <laughs> on a second? We have no interest in the entire country being on food stamps, but let's understand that there are more people on food stamps right now, two years into the Bush, the Obama presidency, because of the actions of George Absolutely. W. Bush yep. and his administration. Yep. And by the end of it, they'll all, those same people who have been added to the roles will yep. be off it as they were. Mm-hmm. But what what gets said about the Obama administration? More people on food stamps than any mm-hmm. Uh, um, mm-hmm. presidency in history. And that argument gets left on the ground because, well, Obama wasn't perfect. And that's the problem that I have. And that's where I feel like I like stand as a I can stand with some clout Mm -hmm. and defend him in those moments to, you know, some of the right wingers that, you know, that I've actually, you know, I've nose to nose with over the years in the Politicon situations or, uh, you know, or on Twitter regularly or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I don't back down in front Mm -hmm. of those folks. And it's not because I have a mob defending me and pushing back, you know? Um, So I, that's, that's the one element of the Obama storyline that I feel like is conveniently left out um, of, of the, you know, the left's, you know, post, you know, like kind of, uh, post Obama presidency, more wagging mm-hmm. their finger at the racism of the right, without wagging a finger at our lack of defense for him in the reality of well, a circumstance. I mean, it even boils. That was hard yeah. to do. So that that's was really my hard to be it, because, and I agree because I was one of those sort of lonely defenders of yes. Barack Obama, and he was better than we deserve. And I, I, I mm-hmm. chided him for not learning the lesson of Harold Washington in Chicago, which is when they turn on you, you need to call them out by name. When people tell you to your face, I'm here to destroy you and there's nothing you can say that will help me, stop trying mm-hmm. to make friends with them. Stop trying trying, stop right. trying to treat them as if you can invite them in and have coffee with them, et cetera. 
But the minute the Obama administration, the minute the Bush administration was over, there were so many people who were complicit in giving us that disaster that the media really shut the door and said, well, that's over. We're not talking about that anymore. That's gone. We're not going right. to discuss it. Let's just, the history begins January t- uh, 10th, uh, t- 2009. <laughs> that's it. Everything before that's unknowable. Yeah. And, well, and that, that long national nightmare is over happens every time a Republican president leaves office. Yes. <laughs> it, Absolutely does. It right. absolutely does. And yeah. once again, history began yet again the day that Trump was inaugurated. Suddenly, Obama ceased That's to right. exist. All that he had done ceased to exist. This simply wasn't part of our national narrative. And there are lots of people who remember all this stuff. And what fascinates me is the mechanism by which discussion about history, about the past, is simply abolished in the media. The people who are now taking up liberal seats on my cable TV news shows are Bill Crystal and Charlie Sykes and Rick mm-hmm. Wilson, all of right. whom uh, are basically parroting the liberal critique of conservatism for 30 years ago. But they're, what they're doing is they're saying, well, this all began with Trump. Trump is a, is, is a black swan. He, he came yes. in and he, he, he hypnotized us. He mesmerized us. And suddenly this party full right. of good, you know, sober, deficit loving, American loving uh, people that I've known all my life became madmen overnight. And once he's gone, they'll right. be gone. garbage. And everyone around that table knows that's bullshit every single person behind the camera knows that's bullshit he's the natural extension he's that you can draw a direct line from ronald reagan through bush one to bush two to to donald trump like ideologically again that pot has Mm -hmm. been boiling on the stove this entire time and all that's left is the madness there's no one at the table this is the part that's that's all about staging and casting (laughs) and being a good director or being a a monstrous director They make sure there is no one at that panel discussion who will say, wait a goddamn minute. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Let's go back to Richard Nixon and the Southern strategy, shall we? Let's talk about Lee, Out- Lee Atwater. Let's talk about you, Rick Wilson, running some of the sleaziest ads in, in political history to get monsters elected. Right. That conversation about, no, 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 this didn't start then. This has been going, this has been coming for decades. And either everyone around this table didn't know it, in which case you are you are incompetent to participate in this conversation. You have no business having an opinion about anything because mm-hmm. I'm just some asshole in the cornfield that I saw it coming 20 years right. ago. Or you knew about it. You know, you, like, like uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Mark Ruffalo said in, uh, in oh, I can't think of the name of the movie, the Washington Post movie. Spotlight. Spotlight. They knew. Yeah. They knew. Yeah. The, either you knew and you covered it up and you profited from it or you didn't know and you're too stupid to be at this table. Either way, why isn't there anyone here talking about life before trump right what republicans were like when they were all called tea partiers what they were all called in, but back when they were screaming up barack obama's birth certificate and that the, the this consistency with which that conversation is censored mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. the new york times and the washington post at the los angeles times and yeah. msnbc and sia is terrifying to me because i don't know how you beat a conversation that people refuse to have unless you have a platform that you can pry your way into that conversation with. Well, again, I think um, in terms of um, Republicans currently own the brand of conservatism, um, right. even though I do not believe they are conservative by any measure. I think no. the, I, the I mean, I, you know, again, going back to the Boy Scouts, but I always viewed conservation as saving <laughs> something from being destroyed. Yes. And and especially when it comes to natural resources, which are limited. And uh, uh, yeah, exactly. And the idea somehow that they conserve anything is at this point is ludicrous on its face. But I, you know, I put up today, you know, I just tweeted a little bit ago, you know, I was like, I was going through the list and I was almost to the note every promise Trump has been talking about from the wall in Mexico will pay for it to the um, to the the trillion dollar deficit we have to this beautiful, uh, cheap and easy genius uh, health care system yes. that's going to be along in a very short period very of time. Short, very, very soon. Very it's going to be here in the next couple of weeks or a short mm-hmm. period of time to the mm-hmm. China deal, which, the, you know, the news stories about that. Talk about feather cutting this <laughs> frigging like this. They've just about agreed on elementary points to what might be the structure of phase one. Like, get yeah. out of here. Yeah. Um, but the idea is, is this is what results from 
this boils down to that poisonous Reagan statement. Um, mm-hmm. I'm from the government yeah. and I'm here to help you is the, you know, the most frightening mm-hmm. word you could ever hear, whatever that, that quote. Um, I put that right up to Bill Cosby saying, you know, I brought you into this world. I'll take you out. Yeah. 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 His son died. Mm-hmm. And for me as a father, carrying around the weight of having said that to my kid at any point yeah. Yeah. and knowing that they passed yeah. would just eat me alive. Mm-hmm. And the idea that somehow you want, you know, you would hire a babysitter who hates kids or a or a politician who hates the government mm-hmm. to run it. I mean, literally, the structure of the essential running form of all Republicans these days, and it's it's it continues to this day, is the government can't do a damn thing right. Elect mm-hmm. me into office so I can prove yeah. it. And that yeah. To me is, you know, if you're if private industry is so amazing and American inse- exceptionalism comes entirely from the freedom to do that, then go yeah. into the private sector and prove it. But none of these guys do. And eventually the people who do prove it the most, um, uh, the Gateses of the world, the Steve Jobs of the world, ultimately find themselves helming organizations that are so big mm-hmm. And reflect so much of a, a picture of humanity and require so much intellectual talent and spiritual and emotional and physical talent that they get a picture eventually of what mm-hmm. it was like to be a robber baron yeah. back in the yes, day. And that they got it. They, they're answering to someone eventually. There was a reason why those guys are, uh, you know, the irony that those robber barons, you know, the Westinghouses and and the like became more men of the people in many ways than modern stock run companies are because they have no job but to mm-hmm. satisfy that protecting the name right. became important to them over yeah. time. That doesn't exist anymore. And the Republicans effectively, like that business model, are treating the United States like they are apartment renters. Yeah. They do not intend to be here. Trump will move his businesses overseas or to the Cayman Islands or it, it, you watch Cayman uh, Ireland will be the tax hub of the Trump organization starting in, you know, 2021. You know what a bust out is, right? Yeah. The mob basically takes over a business, fronts it by an honest person and, and loots the place. This is what's been run right now. We're, we're, we're Russia. watching the bust out of this country. Uh, right at, at the hands of of goo and and the thing is they're playing all their cards up the thing that mm-hmm. is maddening is you can see it happening in real time i've i never i i have a vivid imagination i write science fiction i read science fiction i mm-hmm. I, can, I can imagine all kinds of things i never occurred to me that they would go on television and say yeah we do crimes we do, do we do crimes all the time we're doing crimes right yeah. now we're gonna do them tomorrow and then the next day oh no you know what i said about crimes i meant to say buster rhymes no no you didn't no, yeah that's right wrong. Um, yeah, uh, I was asking somebody the time. You misheard me. It's your ears. You want to hear criminal things because you have fake news. I, um, yeah, you're absolutely right. I will say we are lucky on one front that they're idiots. Yes. That, yeah. Thank <laughs> God. Yeah, stupid, thank right? God. Yeah. Can you imagine the is somebody with the you know the sort of the charm control, the cult like Koreshian control mm-hmm. over the Trump mob, the maggots? That you know, imagine a guy like that with the inherent intellectual Machiavellian nature of Dick Cheney yeah. well, it, that's in Vladimir one person. Putin. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, no, 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 because he does not have the, the emotional control over his okay. people. Okay. It is all, yeah. all weapon is a yeah. fear base. Yeah. That's why he's, that's, that's why right. he's less dangerous than Hitler. Right. Ultimately, right. That's the, because everything he's doing is effectively the same. Um, he, you know, Ukraine is the annexation of right, Poland, right. Uh, flat right. out. Um, the release of ISIS, ISIS fighters on the Turkish border mm-hmm. and the and the d- removal of Turkey from the NATO alliance mm-hmm. over time is a way of squeezing Europe and controlling mm-hmm. the space. Mm-hmm. That is that's 1925 yeah, to right. 1935. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what that yeah. is. Yeah. And it's it, it is absolutely what he's up to. The only thing we have going for us is that he is a at at best he's a pleasurist for his own power and mm-hmm. control. He doesn't and he doesn't have an inherent the Russian people are right. you they know have a physically destiny. superior. Right. They have a destiny to run the no, world. He, he right. lacks right. all of right. that because he doesn't believe it or he wouldn't be able to wipe out a bunch of them sure. in mass eventually, which is sure. the goal. He's going to kill a bunch of his yeah. own people to clear space for the, the upper echelon to have you know uh, fewer right. nudniks running around. Right, right. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, they'll, they're, I mean, they purge their homeless yeah. by pushing the meat. They push them, uh, west towards, uh, I guess, technically from where they're going east, uh, um, towards the winter mm-hmm. areas. So they freeze mm-hmm. to death. They do that yeah. on purpose. They, that's the way they call their yeah. week. Um, yeah. And that, you know, and they will align themselves with the Chinese until they believe they can usurp the Chinese power. Mm -hmm. And they are and they are artificially inflating the power of the Chinese government internally and blowing smoke up their ass with an intention eventually of claiming the land. Um, No question. No question. They believe in a world order that, you know, everything that Alex Jones has been saying about the CIA (laughs) is honest to God, is true of Russia. And a big portion of of who's buying a bunch of his bullshit in his store in bulk over the years Mm -hmm. is Russia. Mm -hmm. Um, And and yeah, you feed the madness. You want everybody to not be able to have a friggin conversation. You want them to be complete wackos. And, uh, you know, every time there's a school shooting in this country, Vladimir Putin applauds. Well, and the, the NRA, the, the, yeah. the, the propaganda strategy has changed. It used to be, you know, control the radios, control the television, and you can basically tell anyone anything. Now it's just yeah. make sure you flood the zone with so much nonsense that no one believes right. anything. And everybody throws that, up their that, hands. Yeah, yeah. It's, a ga- it's gaslighting. Yeah. It's gaslighting as a political strategy. Because, look, Russia, and, and Russia, if you're listening, <laughs> Um, and they are. Is a, they are listening so is, to powerful, yeah. beautiful words that are coming out of your mouth, Alice Park. Mm-hmm. Is a is a dump. Mm-hmm. It's a dump, and and it doesn't have to be. The people are pretty decent amongst themselves. Yeah. They have been the victims of a kleptocracy since during the USSR. Yeah. They were in a they were in a, a dick wagging contest that they were not prepared for. Um, and instead of doubling down on the space explorative aspect of their technology, the way the Japanese and the Korean and the South Koreans mm-hmm. did and making themselves an, a player on multiple fronts on the earth, they decided to um, to tough guy it with a country that was the only one with functioning factories after World War II that could make tanks, bombs and ships. Yeah. It was a moronic move. And ultimately, they they set themselves up for this funneling because they are a you know they are they are Saudi Arabia run by a bunch of Eastern Europeans mm-hmm. right now a bunch of basically the the Eastern European equivalent of rednecks the Saudis are the are the Beverly Hillbillies of the Middle East Iranians Iraqis they talk about them like they're uh, a a cross between the Kardashians and the wild and wonderful whites of West Virginia. <laughs> They are – they do. They looked at them as the, – the, literally the only control point the Saudis have is Mecca and Medina are within their borders. And they have a permanent tourist trap for all Muslims that they can keep. And, and holding on to that is the only power point that they have because they're oil broke. They're going to be cash broke by next year. It's going to fall apart. They're in the same boat as Russia. They produce nothing. They have no other worth on the world stage. They don't – they are ideologically and intellectually vacant as far as what they could create. When's the last time you bought a Russian or a Saudi washing machine yeah. or a, or cell phone or any of that stuff? Um, and that's – they are they know that this is the only control point, and yeah. it's war. Yeah. We are yeah. in a slow rolling World War yeah, III right are. now. Yeah. That's what this is. This is World War III. It is not going to be a nuclear yeah. war, but it will be a, 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 a it is a game of yeah, risk. Right. And yeah. and and Donald Trump is Cheeto Chamberlain. I started calling him <laughs> that this week. Cheeto Chamberlain. He's Cheeto Chamberlain. That's exactly yeah. what's going on. There, no yeah. question. Do I have a graphic for you? I have a graphic for you. I'll pass. Okay. 